What's up everybody, what's going on? Remy Sovereign here, back with a new video today and what we're gonna be talking about today is magnetic renaissance imaging, known as MRI. And I'm gonna be talking about MRIs and the reason being is because a lot of you out there may think it's the perfect assessment for assessing lower back pain and it's the perfect kind of imaging technique that you may need in terms of getting your diagnosis. And while it may be good and it's a good technique or an assessment, it's not the perfect one and it actually has a lot of significant flaws to it. I'm going to explain that and talk about it in this video today. So to begin guys, an MRI is a type of medical imaging technique that is used in radiology to look at the internal organs within our body and to assess kind of the anatomy and physiological processes associated with our body. And it uses radio waves, various frequencies or sound frequencies to detect and to look at the anatomy itself and to assess for any kind of potential damage to various organs or to assess the health of various organs or tissues or bones or joints within our body. And with an MRI, it has become very popular, I would say, over the past, past few decades, especially since it's come out. And it's been used as a very good assessment tool in terms of looking at kind of more of the internal structural issues that may be going on that are maybe causing pain or pathology in, in, in an individual. And now, while it has become more popular and it's become more reliant on by a lot of medical professionals in the medical community, now, while it's become more reliant on, this may be a good thing, but one may argue may this, may, this may be a bad thing because it's leading to more kind of medical doctors or clinicians being kind of becoming incompetent with more physical assessments or mechanical assessments when evaluating an individual because more people are just, or more doctors are just referring to MRIs instead of doing an actual thorough physical assessment on an individual. And that can be very problematic and I'll explain why as I go on throughout this video. But with an MRI now, when it is conducted, it may show a lot of maybe potential issues going on, but the issues that may be discovered may not actually be linked to an individual's pain. So for instance, if someone gets an MRI done, they may see some arthritic kind of changes maybe to their set joints, there may be some disc bulges or degenerative changes to the discs, but that may not actually be their cause of their pain. And what ends up happening is that because it may not be the cause of their pain now, especially if a thorough assessment isn't done, this could lead to an improper recovery program or treatment, including surgery. So now an individual may be getting surgery based on the impression or the diagnosis from that MRI image, when actually maybe their disc bulge or that facet joint or that arthritic facet joint isn't actually the cause of their pain. And there may be another underlying issue going on that may just haven't been picked up by the MRI. And that's where kind of the limitation comes into play. Because if an individual's not getting a thorough assessment, they may get the improper treatment. And they, in severe cases, they may get surgery and that could just be creating more problems down the road and we wonder why people continue to be in back pain as that's one issue. Now that's one issue with regards to the MRI but another significant issue is regards to the position that it's often conducted in which is laying on your back. You often go into the scanner yourself just laying on your back or being in a supine position. And now this is something that actually I learned probably in the past year, actually uh, hearing Dr. John Bergman talk about uh, this with regards to MRIs and I actually have to quote and give credit to one of my subscribers, Ermi, for kind of referring uh, John Bergman to me as he was actually a pretty good resource out there that uh, I actually like and I enjoy a lot of the content he puts out. But anyways, point being is that when you're in an MRI scanner and you're laying on your back, it's evaluating the, and it's looking at the anatomy of your back in that position. And so it's not actually looking at your back or your spine in a position where you're standing, where you're bent over, or where you're under compression or compressive loads, which those may be an individual's pain triggers with regards to mechanical back pain. So if we're putting an individual in a supine position, which may be a pain-free position for an individual, we aren't getting an accurate kind of assessment of the individual because when we go into the pain trigger position, whether that's sitting, whether that's bending over, we're now changing the mechanics of the spine, which we would not see that when we're laying down. And that could lead to maybe an improper impression or diagnosis based on those imaging findings. And we don't actually see the specifics with regards to that in that supine position. And that's why more of a dynamic MRI image or dyna dynamic MRI imaging technique or some other sort of dynamic technique would be 
would be better than just kind of more of a static technique where you're laying on your back because it's the pain triggers in those positions that it's where the mechanics are flawed or where the issue is going on. And that's where we need to kind of address and see what's actually happening in those positions. One wouldn't essentially, sometimes they wouldn't see that in a static MRI image, whether that, whether you, you whether, sorry, whether you're probably only gonna see that in more of an, either a dynamic imaging technique or through a thorough kind of physical mechanical assessment done by a trained clinician where they're evaluating the pain triggers and then making the proper assessment based on what those triggers may be indicating and what the cause of the pain may be. So point being with regards to that now is that MRIs do have some significant flaws and they could lead to the improper diagnosis or treatment. It's not to say MRIs are bad guys, MRIs are good. And if you can get an MRI done, it's, it's, not, it's not a bad thing because it's gonna give you some detailed information of what would be going on in your lower back, but it's not the end all be all assessment. Rather, now I'm kind of quoting McGill here, is that McGill kind of states that a thorough assessment that he kind of performs and people that he works with, that they, or the people that he trains and people that he work, works with and follows his material, that doing a, a thorough assessment in terms of his kind of perspective is much better than any kind of image out there that is kind of showing the anatomy and whatnot. And I tend to agree with McGill on that. Now an MRI, in my opinion, is kind of a good, maybe supplementary type of information to an individual's cause of back pain, but it's important to do kind of that thorough clinical, more physical assessment to actually see what's going on and to see if those, see what's coming up on that MRI image is actually correlating to actual pain in terms of physical assessment to actually get the proper diagnosis and proper kind of determine what the proper issue is in terms of what's going on and then you can develop the proper rehab program for that individual and, the, and then that kind of avoids the issue of going into getting the improper treatment or even in a worst case scenario getting surgery when you don't really need it. And when it comes, it comes to MRIs, it's mostly important to a surgeon, a surgeon that's looking to perform surgery on an individual because they're the ones that are kind of going inside and opening things up and looking at the anatomy, so they have to know where certain nerves are, certain structures, certain ligaments, whatever it is, in terms of when they're maybe doing that surgery, whatever type of surgery they're doing. So the MRI would be almost most important to them, but point being, guys, is that a thorough physical clinical assessment is probably one of the best kind of assessments that an individual can have. Well, an MRI is also really good too. It just it does have its flaws with regards to that. And I just wanted to kind of make this video to address that and to inform you guys that with regards to MRIs, because a lot of you may not know that and may not know kind of some of the flaws associated with that. And it's probably best if you can to find an experienced clinician who knows what they're doing in terms of a physical diagnosis. And they might be able to tell you kind of the best kind of treatment approach, or they may be able to give you the best answer. Now that's someone that's very experienced though in that area, specifically with regards to back pain, not saying an MRI is bad. I'm not saying an MRI isn't good. It's just it has its flaws, but it's but it still will provide a lot of quality information that can be used to kind of maybe further determine what's going on. So that's all I wanted to make this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you and if any questions, comments, or if you're someone that maybe had an MRI and then you maybe had a based on that impression or diagnosis of that MRI image, maybe you had a improper diagnosis for your pain cause, or you had an improper treatment or maybe you even had ended up having surgery when you didn't need it based on that MRI finding. We'd love to hear about your story and that's it for this video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this and until next time I wish you guys all the best and take care.